Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jack and today I've got another video for you talking about my experiences of interviewing within the civil service. Firstly, apologies for the delay in these videos. I know a lot of you guys have been asking and messaging me saying, oh, can you do this behavior? Can you do that behavior? I will do all of them in due time, so just be patient, I will get to them. Anyway, yes, I am back with another civil service behavior video. And today we're gonna to talk about communicating and influencing. This is a behavior that you will find on the vast majority of job adverts because communicating is so so important. Today I'm going to share with you what I think communicating and influencing is all about and how I think you should approach this question at interview. I'm going to use the same format that I've used in previous videos and encourage you to pause after these questions because I think that worked quite well previously and a lot of you guys gave me really good feedback on that. The last thing I want to say is please remember that these videos are my experience and are not to be considered official guidance. If you do like the video please like and leave a comment down below it really helps the channel out without further ado let's get straight into the video as I said, I think communicating and influencing will be on the majority of job adverts that you see. I know for myself, I think in every interview I've done within the civil service, I've been asked communicating and influencing every single time. And this is because communicating is so, so important in whatever role you may be applying for. For example, as an analyst, you may think that all of my time is spent in data, manipulating data, doing data visualizations, etc. However, that's only half of my role. The other half is communicating with stakeholders, present an analysis, and influencing stakeholders to see my point of view. Naturally, if you're going for a more customer-facing role, it's really important that you show that you can communicate well to members of the public who are perhaps external to the organization. Also, whatever role you're applying for will probably mean that you'll be working within a team it's really important to show that you can communicate with others and that you're a good person to have in the team. This also ties into the working together behavior that I'll cover in a future video. I also think with this behavior that generally people understand the communicating part quite well because we all think of times where we've done presentations or we've written board papers or maybe we've communicated in a group setting. However, I think the thing I used to struggle with was the influencing part. Essentially, in any role that you're applying for, there will be a time when you have to influence someone to see your point of view. Maybe it's when you're working on a project with someone and you think that you should go in this direction, but they think they should go in that direction. Essentially, influencing them means that you present the benefits of going with your approach and why you think that this is the best option and why you think, therefore, that they should agree with you and go in your direction. Think of influencing in terms of win-win and not win-lose, where one person's right, one person's wrong. It's about bringing everyone together to try and go in what you think is the right direction. So moving on to the strength questions. Now, someone actually commented on my video the other day saying that at the moment with virtual interviews, the civil service aren't actually doing strength questions. And I can kind of see why, because strength questions rely heavily on being able to see body language. And it's designed to gauge kind of how you react to the question in order to assess whether the thing they're asking is actually a strength of yours. So I can kind of see maybe at the moment they're not going to ask strength questions. However, I've included one because I think it's better to be overprepared than underprepared and then be shocked at interview. So a strength question that I came up with for communicating and influencing was, are you effective at communicating? So you probably want to say yes, first of all. You probably want to say yes and then go on to explain why you think this to be the case. Something that I like to do is say yes and then talk about times where I've been commended on my communication. Maybe talk about a time where I did a presentation and it went really well and I received really good feedback. By saying this and bringing in other people's opinions and times where you've done really well, it kind of validates your initial answer to this question where you said yes, you are an effective communicator. Essentially, if I was asked this question, I would try and give a one-stop shop of all communication tools that I have in my arsenal. I would talk about times I've done a presentation, maybe written board papers, blog posts, anything that you can think of which demonstrates effective communication. Talk about examples in your current role and in previous roles and just touch on different times in the past where you've done really good examples of effective communication. Think about times where you've maybe had to tailor your communication style to your audience and bring all of these into a short, cohesive answer. If you haven't got as much work experience or maybe you're in university, I would recommend think about projects where you've worked with others. 
then break down aspects of that project. So maybe you were working on a project where you had to do a lot of teamwork. Think about your communication style then. Maybe at the end of the project, you had to do a presentation. Talk in detail about that. You know, how did you prepare for the presentation? Who were your audience? Always be thinking of the audience and how you're adapting what you do to suit them in order to make sure that what you're communicating comes across as clearly as possible. Okay, moving on to the situational question, which is designed to be a lot more future facing and kind of gauge how you would react in this situation. A situational question that I came up with for communicating and influencing was as follows. Imagine that you're working with multiple stakeholders on a project and you want to take the project in a certain direction, but they don't agree with you. How would you influence them positively to go in your direction? Ooh, that's a bit of a difficult one, mine, isn't it? I wouldn't fancy that one <laughs> at interview. The reason I put this in is because influencing questions, I feel, are a lot more difficult than communicating. So I thought it would be good to prepare you for this kind of question if you were to get asked. I think the key here to this question is to use evidence. Now, I know that I would say that because I'm a data analyst and that's what we use to make our decisions. However, I really, really believe if you can outline the benefits and the pros of your approach to people, it's a lot easier to influence them than just saying, I think we should do it this way because I just have this feeling. If you're able to outline evidence, maybe use data, I think it's a lot more likely that you're gonna get people on board with your ideas. You've really got to sell it to people and try to get them to buy into your ideas. There may, however, still be some people who are being a bit awkward or maybe still don't see things from your point of view. Here, I would recommend adapting your approach and have a one-to-one -one conversation with that person. Empathize with them and try and understand their point of view and where they might be coming from. This shows that you can be empathetic and that you can tailor your approach to suit all individuals in the audience. This is a large part of communicating and influencing because a lot of the times you'll get the majority of people on board, but there's just a few more people that you have to try and persuade. By having a one-to-one -one conversation with them, explaining your point of view and trying to understand theirs, hopefully you can come to a win-win situation. So to answer this question, I would use evidence in order to highlight why I think this is the direction that we should go in on the project. I would then present this to all the stakeholders on the project and take feedback and incorporate this into my approach and be open to making any changes that I think are necessary. Don't be stubborn to the point where you can't take on good ideas because you've got in your head that this idea is the best idea. Always be open and open to receiving feedback. A lot of the time, this will hopefully get people on board. If it doesn't, then I would recommend having one-to-one -one conversations with those who aren't and try and empathize with them, see their point of view, and see if you can come to a win-win situation. If you don't, and maybe it's a senior person, senior grade, and they're gonna do it their way, and you've presented your ideas and tried to influence and it's not working, it's important to let the interview panel know that regardless, you will still put in your 100% effort into the project despite your ideas maybe not going the way you wanted them. This shows that you're a team player and even though you have tried to influence them, you can accept that sometimes this isn't possible. This last step is really, really important and I would highly recommend that you include this because it shows that you're not stubborn and that you are a team player. There's nothing worse than someone who thinks their idea is the best idea, tries to force this on everyone, it doesn't work, and then they spend the rest of the project sour and kind of withdrawn. Show that you're a team player and show that you'll still work on things to the best of your ability, despite not maybe agreeing with the initial approach. Okay, the final question we're gonna talk about is a typical competency style past example question. So the question that I came up with for communicating and influencing was as follows. Tell me about a time when you've had to adapt your communication style to suit your audience. This question is essentially testing, can you read the room and therefore adapt your communication style to suit your audience? At the end of the day, you could have really, really great content in your presentation, but if you miss the mark and don't meet the audience where they're at, it's gonna go to waste because they're not gonna absorb the information and take it in. A large part of my job is being able to understand my audience and communicate analysis to meet them where they're at. For instance, if I'm talking to another statistician, I know that I can use really technical terms like regression and correlation, etc. However, if I'm doing a piece of work for someone in the business who's maybe a little less technical, I know that I need to explain things in terms that they understand. Being able to understand your audience is so, so key, and I would really recommend 
you can think of an example where you've had to meet the audience where they're at. For all of you guys watching this, I would recommend that you think of a time where you really took into account the end customer. Think about how you adapted your communication style to suit. Also, be sure to include how you assessed your audience. Maybe you had a one-to-one -one conversation initially or Maybe you met the team before doing a piece of work to understand kind of where they're at and what they wanted. A lot of the time we do these things naturally without even thinking, but if you can break it down in your head and then communicate that to the interview panel, this will really help show a detailed and thorough example. So I came up with some things that I think you should be thinking about when trying to think of an example for this question. You could talk about a presentation that you did during the working from home environment. I know it's been really, really difficult sometimes presenting and trying to keep engagement. So you could talk about how you structured your presentation to get engagement from your audience. You could also talk about any sort of written document you've created. Maybe you've come up with a new policy or maybe you've had to write a blog post or maybe you've written a board paper. Talk about how you've adapted your communication style. For instance, if you're doing a board paper, it's going to be very different to writing a blog post. The board paper is going to be a lot more concise and to the point and the blog post is going to be a lot more conversational and informal. Think about ways in which you adapted your communication style to suit the audience and the person seeing the content. The main thing you want to highlight here is how you adapted your communication style to ensure that whoever's reading it has the best possible chance of fully understanding it. So that is all for this video, guys. Communicating and influencing is a very common one. I hope a lot of you kind of get the gist of the communication part. And I hope that that influencing question gets you thinking about how you could structure your answers if you were asked something equivalent. If you did like the video, please hit the like button down below and let me know in the comments what you took from it and some of the things that you may be struggling with when it comes to communicating and influencing. As always, thank you all very much for watching. Have a great day, take care, and I'll see you all soon.